Welcome to the Nature Institute. My name's Ramona, and we're standing here on top of the bluffs overlooking the Mississippi River in Godfrey, Illinois. Now, what do you know about the Mississippi River? You might answer, it's big, it has lots of fish in it, and both of those are very, very true. So what is a river? A river is a large natural stream of water flowing in a channel to the sea, a lake, or another such stream. So here we have the Mississippi River, which is a very, very large river, and it flows into the Gulf of Mexico. And there are other rivers that flow into the Mississippi River, making it even bigger. So the Mississippi River drains 31 U.S. states and two provinces in Canada. That's a lot of water, making it the fourth longest river system in the world and the 10th most powerful. It's a really, really big river. The only rivers that are bigger are the Amazon, the Yangtze, and the Nile. There are three things that you can find out about the river. First, where does the Mississippi River start? What state does it start in? Where does it end? What is the last state that it travels through before ending in the Gulf of Mexico? And how many U.S. states does the Mississippi River touch? It's a border river for a lot of those states. Maybe you can name all of them. So that's your challenge. Find out where the river starts, where the river ends, and how many states the river touches. The river is also a habitat. Now what's a habitat? Well, a habitat is a natural home or environment of an animal, plant, or other organism. It's a place where it can find everything that it needs. What do animals need? They need food, they need water, they need shelter, and they need space. So let's think about the river as a habitat. What lives there? Maybe you say a fish, and you're right. Fish live in the river, and what do they need to survive? Well, they have to live in the water in order to survive. That's where they get their oxygen from. But that's also where they find their food. It's also where they make their home. And it's where they're going to be able to find lots and lots of space to spread out and find the food that they like, right? Now, what about the sides of the river? What's that habitat called? That habitat is riparian habitat or riparian areas. And riparian areas traditionally are full of plants. There's usually lots of trees, lots of plants that line the river, and there are so many animals that will live in those riparian areas. So think about it. You'd probably see deer along the river and raccoons along the river, as well as coyotes and skunks and all sorts of things that are probably using the river for their water, sometimes for food if they're looking for fish or shellfish or crayfish, different things like that. So both of those habitats are very, very important. And when we put them together, we get a lot of biodiversity, lots of animals, lots of plants that are relying on that river for what they need. So one of the challenges that I have for you is to make a food chain for the river and the riparian habitat around it. Now, what's a food chain? Well, a food chain shows how organisms are related based on order of predation. So who eats who? For instance, a prairie food chain might look similar to this. The grass grows because the sun shines down on it and it gets water from the ground. It's able to grow nice and tall. And that grass gets eaten by a grasshopper. And then a snake comes along and eats the grasshopper. And then what might eat that snake? Maybe a hawk. So a hawk comes and eats the snake. And that's a food chain. But sometimes it gets even more complicated than that. So a food web is where all of these different food chains are actually related to each other. So a hawk doesn't just eat snakes. It will also eat rabbits and mice, and squirrels, and some hawks even eat birds. So it gets just a little bit more complicated when you're looking at a food web. So your challenge is to create a food chain for the river. 
So think about the plants that are going to be the start of that food chain. Maybe cattails, maybe some floating plants, maybe just the plants that are along the side of the river, the grass, the trees, the shrubs. And then what's going to eat those? Maybe a mouse, maybe a grasshopper, maybe a fish that only eats plants. But just work your way up from there. Think about what eats the next thing. So that is your challenge, to create a food chain for the Mississippi River and the riparian habitat around it.